We know that our assets is equal to debt plus equity. Let's assume that a firm has equal debt and equity, both of them is 50%. The cost of debt is 10%, cost of equity is always higher, which is equal to, in this example, 14%. So what if we would like to calculate the cost of the entire asset, which means the cost of debt and equity. That's why we call it cost of capital. So we need to get here the simple average. So we'll say that the cost of capital is equal to cost of debt plus cost of equity divided by two. So we'll get 10% plus 14% divided by two. It will give us 12%. Let's assume another example here. We have exactly the same company, but the percentage of debt is not the same as percentage of equity. Here we have a debt of 60% and equity 40%, which is more realistic. We still have the same cost of debt and cost of equity. So in order to get the cost of assets or the cost of capital, the cost of both debt and equity, can we still use a simple average? Of course not, because we have different weights. Consequently, what we need to do now is instead of getting the simple average, we need to get the weighted average. And that's why we'll call it a weighted average cost of capital, which is equal to the percentage of debt multiplied by cost of debt plus get the percentage of equity multiplied by cost of equity. So our WAC will be percentage of debt, which is 60%, multiplied by cost of debt, which is 10%, plus percentage of equity, which is 40%, multiplied by cost of equity, which is 14%. And this will give us 11.6%. Remember that every time a firm uses a debt, one of the motives to use debt is debt would result in tax shield. What do you mean by tax shield? It means that every time a company uses debt, it will pay interest. The interest is tax deductible. Consequently, the company will pay lower taxes, which we call it the benefit of tax shield. Therefore, this WAC doesn't reflect here the tax shield. Therefore, this WAC is called pre-tax or before tax weighted average cost of capital. So we're going to calculate another WAC, which is called post-tax WAC or after-tax WAC, the only difference is I need to multiply the cost of debt by 1 minus T in order to reflect the benefit of the tax shield. Remember that taxes affects only debt, but it doesn't affect equity. Therefore, we will do exactly the same formula. We will get percentage of debt, which is 60%, multiplied by cost of debt, which is 10%, multiplied by 1 minus tax rate. Let's assume that tax rate is 30% plus percentage of equity, 40%, multiplied by cost of equity, 14%. We don't multiply cost of equity by one minus T because taxes doesn't affect equity. It will affect debt only. Therefore, we will get here 9.8%. Therefore, when we talk about pre-tax WAC or before tax WAC, this cost of debt, this RD is called before tax cost of debt or pre-tax cost of debt. While if I multiply my cost of debt by one minus tax rate, this is now called after tax cost of debt because now it reflects our tax shield. Therefore, for pre-tax WAC, we use before tax cost of debt. For our post-tax WAC or after tax WAC, we use after tax cost of debt or post-tax cost of debt. Therefore, if we'd like to make a comparison, we will figure out that all the time before tax cost of debt will be bigger than after tax cost of debt. Why? Because in our after tax cost of debt, we multiplied by one minus T. How in both of them, they will be equal. They will be equal if we don't have taxes. We can apply the same concept with before tax WAC or pre-tax WAC will always be bigger than post tax WAC or after tax WAC. Why? Because with post tax WAC, we use after tax cost of debt. While with pre-tax WAC, we use before tax cost of debt. So when pre-tax WAC will be equal to post-tax WAC if we don't have taxes.